thank you, Charlie, for inviting me here. I love our stay. Uh, yesterday it was uh, hard, yesterday evening. I don't mean the boat, I mean the after show. <laughs> but um, that's so important because uh, um, the first speaker we had this morning, thank you very much for telling us um, about um, breathing, swallowing, and I will keep up with it. Maybe I repeat a little bit, but it's such an important thing, so I would like to tell you. First of all, who am I? Um, I'm working in that uh, big praxis with my sister and my parents. Um, this praxis is in Germany, in Herne, for over 62 years now. So we are the second generation, and I'm proud to tell you that my eldest daughter will be an orthodontist as well. So we keep up the generation, the family, like uh, Ephraim, and you are doing that. So, um, first of all, I'd like to introduce you to my father, Professor Hinz. Um, he uh, founded the Dr. Hinz Dental at least at 1982, and um, he did such a lot for early prevention. Um, I should greet you all from him. Um, he is uh, on another uh, snoring congress in Germany at the moment. Um, he will turn 95 in January. But he's still working, writing a book about Alinos in the moment. And so he sent me to come here because he's working on another place. But the things I want to tell you today, we all know. We are doing, and, and I love the genius system as well. Normally I would like to tell you uh, a lot about fixed appliances, self-ligation, uh, showing cases and cases, but that's not my, uh, what I should do today. But as we all know, we are looking, as doctors, we always see teeth. We are looking at teeth, see lack of space for permanent teeth. We, we see the incorrect bite positions, faulty single teeth, and um, chewing and biting if it is not okay. We look at aesthetics, of course. We look at faces smiling, but we have to look at breathing and swallowing. You all know, without breathing, healthy breathing, we couldn't exist. So we need the oxygen in our cells to just live, to regenerate our cells, and the carbon dioxide and the waste products can remove. But if breathing is not properly, we have not enough air for our cells and they die. We feel tired, like, like we all do this morning, um, unmotivated and we have no energy. So um, we sleep poorly, snoring problems and uh, we are wake up always tired. And the most important thing is that healthy breathing, as you said this morning, has to come through your nose, not breathing during, um, during mouse. Because it's so important that the air is warmed up before um, for our bronchies and lungs. So we need to clean the air with nose breathing. But just look uh, how we, when we are standing just upright and breathe through our nose. The curve of sp uh, spine is different when we breathe through our mouth and we constrict the air 
airway. And that's a big, big problem for, um, for children. So with good breathing, nasal breathing, we strengthen, strengthen our muscles in the head and neck and we have a lot of stability. Um, this is a basis for healthy development for our children, nasal breathing, closed mouth. But what happens in our mouth when we are breathing right? The tongue is at the right position. And that's what I heard um, very formally from Dr. Gugino. He always said, the first thing you have to do is unlock the maxilla. The maxilla has to develop. And um, so all when we have um, wrong swallowing and breathing, we, that leads, can lead to jaw anomalies. We don't only have mouth breathers, but we have children, they have an open mouth posture. And that means that the tongue is not at the right place. So why do children breathe through their mouth? So, oops, we, we have to see if there are anatomical problems. Okay, we are dentists, we are orthodontics, but sometimes we have to look a little bit more deeper. Sometimes you see large adenoids, tonsils, um, underdeveloped nasal cavities, nasal polyps, and a crooked, crooked nasal septum. Many children have allergies and always don't forget to look at the frenulum um, for the tongue. Um, the mouth breathing could be acquired and it leads to an imbalance um, of our muscles in the facial area. The muscles of our tongue and lip, um, they affect uh, this. But I want to tell you that it is very important that it is related with habits, lack of movement, incorrect posture, and too little body tension. No, wrong way. So especially children with mouth breathing can endanger their health. And we all wish us that we have healthy children, good development of children. Because the air, as I said, is unfiltered and many of these uh, children who are mouth breathers or open mouth posture, they often have colds and they are not healthy as we wish. So <clears throat> as we already heard, we see concentration problems with children, their restlessness, they are very tired in daytime, they are fatig this fatigue syndrome and the performance of our children is reduced. So because everything starts with breathing, because the oxygen in the blood is not enough. But we see other things. We see the development of faces. And um, as you see here, mouse breathers have facial changes. They have long faces. Long faces, dry lips, um, sore corners of the mouth, and um, we see that. And this expression of a child with an open mouth looks not healthy and it looks not intelligent. Some people who are always with an open mouth, they, are, they are look not intelligent. So, but what we see is the development, of course, of the jaw and the malocclusion of the teeth. We see narrow palates. We see lower back 
um, displacement and an open bite for very young children. And it all starts with a balance of the tongue position um, um, and the teeth. This is a correct rest position and you see the balance, everything is working, the teeth are just in the middle, the strength of the tongue, the cheeks, the, um, everything is working on the teeth and if the tongue is not right, if it is down, it leads to these um, narrow maxillas. So, <coughs> as you see, we have the narrow jaw or open bite. The jaw growth cannot be, um, be normal. And the tooth, teeth, of course, the position is not right. It dries out uh, the membranes and gingivitis, gingivitis, gingivitis is, um, is coming up. So, we are thinking of just eliminate these habits as early as you can for little children. We often see so many young children going out like this. Looks this intelligent for young children? It doesn't. So we have to see the dysfun dysfunctions, they could be static or dynamic. The static ones is the open mouth posture, the, as we said, the pathologic tongue position, and the lip closer is not uh, right. In dynamic function, um, we have the not correct swallowing, um, the disorders of articulation, and oral habits, and all that leads to risky jaw anomalies. So let's go to the point early treatment and prevention. And I don't mean with early treatment, um, f do a cross bite or whatever. I mean other things. And my father created this kind of stairs. He did these products to start from two years on with a device called Stoppy, Muppy, the aligners, and do something for children which are, uh, have bruxism. And um, as I am an orthodontist for 25 years now, I would never say, use these devices, you will never a need orthodontics in the end. Some people do that and say, use myofunctional de um, de devices and you don't need orthodontic treatment, you don't need braces. Why? It doesn't matter, of course you need braces so often. And you, we treat a lot of cases, and I want to show you that, um, myofunctional things before and after that, a normal orthodontic treatment. But you have more stable uh, results in the end if you think about dysfunctions. That's so important. So let's look at the open bite. Why, does it, why do we see it so often with young children? Some children have the um, thumb sucking, some children have the bottle, nursing bottle syndrome, um, and a lot of children using pacifiers. And um, can you imagine why I wrote down three hours a day, three hours a day, the pacifier six hours a day? It's easy for children having something in the mouth, they have both hands free. They can play with both hands. And what we see then with the children is very early in primary dentition, this. Everyone has this in, in the praxis or see um, siblings from patients, little, little childs, symmetrical open bite. 
it looks a little bit more d uh, different when you have your thumb. It's asymmetrical, of course, because you have more have it on one side and it's easy to find out with children which one they use. Sometimes they look like a little bit, um, how do you say, you know what I mean? And they are always um, clean. They're clean. Um, this, um, on the left side, it's me, actually. I was a little bit younger there, but I did that. And I was the first patient for my father, treated me with an um, oral device, um, a muppy. So we, we have the problem with the asymmetric open bite. Um, but how we treat that then in that early age um, with myofunctional dysfunctions? So we have to see some things, uh, some, the most of the things we, we see very early and we want to be interceptive. Uh, it means that we are early but time limited. Time limited treatment, uh, we interrupt the harmful habits and we want to go um, to a reintroduction of a normal jaw development. So with these devices we um, have, we like to wean off harmful sucking habits at an early age. It should be, of course, if you have a patient and a very young patient, you want to do it voluntary. So it's sometimes not easy, we all know that, uh, to treat children, of course. Easier to treat children that when they are younger as when they are 14, 15, because they have so many things, other things in mind. But it's always difficult to treat children with uh, removable appliances. But we need their help and uh, their support. So at this age, a self-regulation is possible. These devices are made of silicon, silicon, and um, they look easy. And you just, uh, the first speaker showed us something, but we like to correct, prevent already existing tooth and jaw misalignments um, and we like to wean off pacifiers, thumbs, fingers, or these um, bottles, which they use a lot of time. And we say, okay, you can use it as often as you use a pacifier. We need daytime, of course. Daytime, two hours at least, and Um, so it's a substitute for a thumb or a pacifier very early um, to wean the sucking habits off. And if we don't have a very pronounced anomaly, we can go very um, quickly to the normal um, development. So we restore the physiological relationship in the all of the orofacial area, they are activated because they are out of silicon by the lip and tongue muscles. And these muscles were transferred to the teeth. And so look at this little boy. Um, oops. It's not mine. <laughs> okay. Uh, he has an open mouth posture. The lower lip is rolled out. And um, when he was training with the Muppy, you see how he strengthens the muscles. And after three months, it's an improvement that it, it looks, a, it's a complete different expression of a child having it with an open mouth or closed lips. But we, can, we see other things. 
especially in winter time. So many children have um, these dysfunctions. You see the lips, the teeth coming out, biting of lips, and uh, so all these things we can treat as well. Um, the aligner, so I don't tell you what to use at what age, but the aligners, this is a blue one, it's called uh, prevention aligner, it's against harmful habits. It's um, for myofunctional disorders as open mouth posture or a little open bite. And you see um, some cases, they are all about eight, seven, eight years, and uh, it's a, mm, a uh, the treatment time not longer than six months. So you see, it's not finished, of course, but we have a, a not a primary. We have a um, early mixed dentition, and the first thing is we stop the mouth breathing, and have the normal development in the end. That's another case for treated with this auto prevent aligner for three months. She had a big, big problem with swallowing asymmetrically, but everything made was made by the tongue. Okay, in the end, you see, you still have a midline to, to be correct. It's a little bit. Believe me, on the left side, um, I had a class one, so maybe you should do nothing else anymore. But she, you see that on the right picture above, when she closes her mouth, her muscles must work. They must work. And as the tongue is not coming forward, this open bite um, is very, very uh, fast. It's gone. But how we treat a really an open bite with young children? So often sy symmetrically, um, by, by a pacifier, we can use this stoppy. Stoppy is to stop a pacifier. Um, you can start uh, at the beginning of uh, two. And you see there's nothing in between the teeth in the front. You have little um, lateral bite ramps that the little children can hold it better. And in between their teeth, it's easier. You see that there? Most important thing is you need a voluntary exchange. So most of the time I tell the mothers or fathers, just um, they bring the pacifiers. They bring the pacifiers and we just change. I keep the pacifiers and they get the other device. And it doesn't, you know, they have pacifiers um, everywhere. So sometimes they come with a big box and <laughs> bring all of them. And it's going so easy and very fast, only three months with a stoppy to close this bite for in a very young child. Maybe you see it better here. Um, so this is a young child, three years old, uses specifier, a long uh, daytime use, and it's getting very fast, you can close the bite, um, the lips, the breathing, and do um, very early for the healthy of our children. Of course, you have to motivate the children, you motivate the mothers and fathers. That's sometimes harder than the children. The children are perfect. They do it, they like it, they want to, um, when they come the next time, they want uh, to hear how good work sh they, they did, um, make photos, show it to them, but you have to motivate the uh, parents as well. 
and you, they should do it alone to put it in, and um, they they have to. You can this um, ring. You can um, pull in it, and um, the lips strengthens um, after it. I show you some more exercises. So <coughs> these devices, if you really have an open bite, frontal open bite, sometimes it's hard for the tongue. It comes always. It comes through, and for that you have these. Um, these uh, tongue guards out of metal and these ones are not made of silicon, they are rigid so that the tongue is uh, held away from the teeth. <sighs> and you see um, it's the tongue within six weeks the tongue is just held away from the teeth and the bite could um, be closed. Another way for children up to six, seven, eight years is to use another auto prevent aligner. It's a green one, but it's not only the color which is uh, important, they can't choose. We have an easy system, not devices, 70, 80 devices, and you have to choose. No one knows what, what device you have to take. So our devices, I show it later, um, they relate to anomalies. And this green one, to correct an open bite, it, it has a cutout in the front because we want the frontal teeth to get longer. And um, you see <coughs> nine-year-old, sometimes you have to cut it a little bit. It depends on the, um, um, on the mouth. So it's easy to, to make it a little bit smaller if it is too big. And it helps the tongue away. And this girl was nine year years old. And I did a long treatment for her. A long treatment. She used it for two years. I was sure I will need orthodontic treatment in the end. I was sure. She had a lot of um, speech therapy. Ther therapy and uh, the myofunctional training with the device, the OPA for the open bite. You see, we have not straightened teeth, but we have a closed bite. And most important, just he's, she's laughing, but you see where the tongue is. It looks different. But after that, as I told you, as an orthodontic, I use braces, not in all cases, but of course. Um, the first, the habit correction, make breathing, swallowing uh, the tongue, um, make the normalization of everything, and then it's an easy treatment with genius brackets for 12 months, and then you have a, a successful and the most important thing is a stable result in an orthodontic case. That's what I just told you. Sometimes it's necessary to individualize uh, these devices a little bit, but that's easy for us. This is another case. You see her, she looks not only open bite, she looks class three. And I was really sure I had to treat her at the end. Um, and it was hard to treat her only with the prevent aligner. I did the, like the two by four um, system. Like I learned, I, I'm a bioprogressive uh, orthodontic. I learned with bioprogressive from Ricketts and Gugino. And we use these utility arches. You can use that uh, with genius as well. It's a bracket. 
Yeah? But you see, after the therapy, just to see her smile, it looks, it looks different. Show you another case. Um, it's another eight-year-old boy, always showing teeth. No proper lip closure. And um, you see him with his open bite, a little bit back. And OK, you see that seven months treatment, it's not finished. Else, we should do in the moment. We can wait. We can wait. We have the normal functions; are, uh, they are correct, and then you can wait and see what you do later. The parents are happy because they see it that something changes, easily change. <coughs> this is a another case. <clears throat> he was wearing it very, very good, but it was a class three also. Yeah, you see that, um, and it's, uh, of course, I think um, he will, I make a retention with, um, um, with his aligner, but they, it will open again. When he's growing, I have to do um, another consequent ortho um, tr um, treatment with brackets, I'm sure. But we have not only the open bite, we see that very often we have the um, lower jaw back displacement, the class two, because we have the narrow um, pellets and the lower jaw cannot develop normally to class one. That makes us a problem for our normal muppies because they, they fall out. Because the lower jaw cannot come forward. And this is so we have a little bite cap for the lower teeth that the um, lower jaw must come forward by varying it. You can use it for deep bites as well, I will show you. See this little girl, the lip very short, the upper lip, showing her teeth every time. And you see what the training is to make like kisses, sucking on it and strengthen, uh, make the muscles stronger. And so many parents understand that this is dangerous for little teeth. Yeah, every um, table, every um, um, uh, swimming pool, yeah? it could be very dangerous for these little children um, to, to have accidents <coughs> and have problems then um, uh, with damaged teeth. And you see her, she had uh, an accident before. Um, <clears throat> so, very early starting, you see what you can do um, in a short period of time just to help these little ones to get back to normal um, functions. You can make it funny. This is one game you can show them to you, uh, show them to the kids, the plop game. You are just tightening and uh, the ring and these little children should hold it. It's so funny, First of the first uh, time when you do it, it comes out. The next time you can go like a, a cow <laughs> yeah, through whole of your office and, and, and pull them. They are so, and they have so much fun to show you how um, strong their muscles can be. Because this negative pressure from our lips 
um, there, it is so wonderful to use natural things to improve um, function. Another thing is sometimes you have siblings. You can take a, um, a rope, a non-elastic one, and um, they have to put the arms behind their back and uh, they, they fight. It's not, you know, every um, speech therapist would tell me, oh, siblings, that's not good. They should be on one high, so not asymmetrical. Then set them on a, on a chair, it's no problem. But it's all about, um, it's, it's exercising playfully. And we all know children, they like these challenges and want to do something. Or they, they have to make a, a vacuum, kissing. Show me the little ones, show me how you give, your, give a kiss with the device inside. It's easy for them to um, make the uh, lip muscles stronger. And it's all about the silicon of these mappi forms the dental arches in uh, using the natural forces. So these mappi, yeah, they are um, smaller ones for primary dentition um, with a pink ring and the blue one is for the mixed dentition. They are only, they are not wider but they are a little bit longer and um, you can get them in two different hardness grades, so elastic and rigid, of course, for the uh, tongue um, thing. But another thing, we, we talk about uh, class two. Do something for the kids. This is the auto prevent aligner in red doing um, things for primary and for mixed dentition. Five-year-old, big, big problem um, because the lip is um, going behind the upper teeth and the mouth is not closed all the time. And he wear it um, for 10 months and it, it looks wonderful, very easy. Um, treatment. It doesn't mean, you know, when this boy um, is, is getting older, uh, the class two will come, maybe, in, in puberty or whatever, but you do something early for uh, the normal function. <coughs> Another <coughs> um, boy, um, I treated him um, first for nine months, but the parents said, oh, don't, we don't want other training, uh, other devices. We, we want to have this device. We make everything with this. It, what, it was not my wish, but this boy, both of his parents are teachers. One, the father is uh, teaching mathematics and the mother Latin. And they were so strict with this uh, little boy, but he, he was doing it and look just what happened. I was not, for this, look at the time. It was all about changing teeth, permanent dentition, but they didn't want to change treatment, so I said, okay, then uh, we finish it like this. I have an open bite there at the 2-2. Um, they said it's no problem. They, he has no treatment in the end, no other treatment. As we have open bites, class two problems, we have a lot of um, patients with deep bites. And Especially when they are very young, you see the uh, traumatic deep bites when the tools are changing. Um, a muppy with a bite cap can help here as well. You see sometimes that the gingiva 
has, has a lot of uh, problems, um, traumatic, and so we can use this just to help the little children not to um, have these problems. You, you see that a lot, especially when, ch uh, when teeth changes. Another thing is, um, coming back to the aligners, to um, change a, a deep bite is the yellow one. Um, this is coming, all the aligners coming in a more, um, in a hard one and in a smoother one, but for the, um, for this um, deep bite, it's only um, a heart made of, of harder silicone. I want to show you this case. She is 11 years old, and the treatment time with this OPA for deep bite was about um, eight months. But here you see face changes. Um, this is what we did 12 months. Okay, everyone of you would say it's not a it's not a finished case. Of course, it's not finished. But the most important thing is what happened here. We have this dysfunction, and we see it a lot uh, of children with deep bites have their mentalis um, problem, and the activity of the mentalis is so strong, and you change the profile of this girl um, very good. And this makes the um, treatment later much more stable. Of course, I treated her first to um, um, help her with her strong uh, mentalis. This activity, stop it. You see it up in the face, what happened. And then I start with brackets, but it was a short treatment for 12 months. I think in between 12 and 14 months, 16 months, you can treat most of the cases. And we have a successful, and it is so important to have a stable result in the end. Okay, I use retainers, as all of you. You would uh, be crazy not to use them. Yes, but some people say, if you do myofunctional things before, you don't need retainers. You don't need retainers. The um, third molars will come. The canines lying horizontal, they come. No, that's not right. But we have to focus uh, the child um, that the tongue should be upright, to get the maxilla develop in the right way, the lips should be together, the breathing should be through their nose. And that's the most important thing we tell our children. Another deep bite. Um, it was a treatment for about um, half, half a year, I guess, yeah. And after two years, she didn't come back then. I had this treatment. After two years, I saw her again. Changed. Okay, the midline, it was three years after treatment and the parents didn't want any orthodontic treatment anymore. But I was satisfied and the girl said, it's fine for me. Another thing. Uh, just five minutes, please. Yes, yes, yes. Thank I'm. You. Uh, <laughs> um, eight year old, treatment time 12 months. Of course, we know we have to treat it later. So, important first correct the myofunctional issues and then go to normal treatment. As we have the muppies um, make um, the exercises, of course we can treat, uh, train the children in front of a mirror, just um, practicing swallowing, breathing, and show him these, show them the exercises. 
Um, it is an active face, a passive face, um, closed lips, breathe through the nose. Looks like this, I bake it a little bit. Um, uh, closed lips. Working, they have to work. So for primary dentition, there are only um, three devices. And for um, mixed dentition, there's another one for children who have bruxism. So the devices, as I all tell you, what they do, change mouse to nasal breathing, um, weaning of uh, these um, habits, and all these things coming much more. The swallowing, the lips, we can do that very early. But what is, why it is so important? Because little children have problems also with snoring and bruxism. And you see, um, we can prevent teeth grinding. And um, there are some different opinions. Sometimes uh, they say it's normal. Little children have to grind their teeth. But they have problems like adults have. And you can uh, use this uh, aligner, um, do something for the habits or dysfunctions, and they don't grind anymore. And for sleep medicine, as we heard, it's so important. What we do with orthodontic treatment is that we can treat earlier for better airway that our adults are not have sleep disorders. So we can um, make the airway there, make it wider for the development in the children. So I would say, an orthodontic treatment is not only a smile, so we avoid uh, uh, sleep disorders when we uh, see adults. Mm, and so I would like to say thank you with mm, a picture of my family, my sister, me and my um, mother and my father. And um, you don't believe me, but he worked uh, till he was 92 in the praxis. COVID made him stay home, and, um, but he's still working, not with patients, but at home. <laughs> so thank you very much.